My video presentation is about amplified fragment chain polymorphism. It is one of the best method to detect the polymorphisms in DNA. And uh, this method was first described by Was and Zapu in the year 1993. Now we are specifically going to see about cDNA AFLP technique. And this technique is used for quantifying differences in gene expression levels. And uh, following steps should be followed for cDNA AFLP technique. And the first step is digestion of DNA using restriction enzymes. The second step is ligation of the restricted fragments. The third step is selective amplification. And finally, it is the detection of variation using silver staining procedure. First and foremost step to be done is RNA isolation for which the leaf is cut into pieces and liquid nitrogen is added to it. After addition of liquid nitrogen, it has to be grinded well. And later, it has to be transferred into a append of tube and then add trisol reagent to it. After addition of trisol reagent, it has to be incubated for about 5 minutes at room temperature. Add chloroform and incubate it for about 2 minutes. And then it should be subjected to centrifugation for 20 minutes at 12,000 rpm. Transfer the aqueous layer to new tube and add NaCl and isopropanol to it and then centrifuge it. Then discard the supernatant and wash the pellet with ethanol and sterile water and finally add dry it. After RNA isolation, next step is the cDNA synthesis. Here is the mRNA and to which cDNA primers are added. The reverse transcriptase enzyme helps to synthesize the first cDNA strand. Nextly, the second cDNA strand synthesis takes place. RNA is fragmented using RNA's H enzyme and the DNA polymerase enzyme helps to synthesize the second strand when the primer is introduced. In the amplification cycle, the above set process takes place continuously. This process to get the resultant cDNA happens for about 4 hours. Next comes the restriction and ligation of adapters. Restriction enzyme is added to the cDNA mixture. The two enzymes are ECOR1 and MSC1 which cut at their restriction sites. ECOR1 is a rare 6 base cutter and MSC1 is a frequent 4 base cutter. The ligation of restriction fragments using ECOR1 adapter and MSC1 adapter happens now. Preselective amplification is the next process. In the PCR machine, for about 26 cycles, the following temperatures are maintained for this process. Preselective primers are nothing but adapters with a supplementary base, may be adenine, guanine, cytosine, or thiamine. It enables the first selection, and after this step, one by fourth of the fragment is amplified. Next step is selective amplification. The following temperature is maintained in the PCR machine for this process. Here, additional three or more nucleotides are added to the primer sequence, which will make the amplification still more selective. Acrylamide gel electrophoresis is done in which gel for AFLP is run.
gel is run and the sample is viewed using silver staining procedure which follows. Firstly, the fixer solution is poured into the tub. Fixer solution contains acetic acid and water. Now you all can see the glass plate is immersed into the fixer solution. It is then allowed to shake in the shaker for about 15 minutes. Now the plate is removed from the fixer solution and is given a distilled water wash. After the wash, the plate is subjected to staining solution for about 15 to 20 minutes. The staining solution contains silver nitrate and formaldehyde. Silver ions are photosensitive, so you can see the tub is covered. Now add 3 ml of formaldehyde and 400 microliter of sodium thiosulfate to the developer's solution which contains sodium carbonate and now mix it well. Then remove it from the staining solution and wash it with water. Now place it in the developer solution and shake it manually for 15 to 20 minutes. Keep it in the fixer or stopper solution for 5 minutes and then again in water. This is AFLP gel photo and number 1 represents 100 base pair ladder. Number 2 and number 4 are parents that is VRM and TNA red. Number 3 represents the F9 population. And here using AFLP we are finding to which parent the F9 population resembles. The arrow mark represents the band which is present in TNA red lane number 4 but not in F9 population that is lane number 3. F9 population resembles VRM that is lane number 2 since the bands match each other. The main application of cDNA AFLP technique is finding differentially expressed genes in any organism. The others are genome mapping, genetic fingerprinting, genetic distance analysis and genetic diversity assessment.